Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the last videos, we talked about Staph aureus, Streptococcus pyogenes, and the very dense group Streptococci. Today, it's time for Streptococcus pneumoniae. It normally colonizes the nasopharynx and the throat of many people, but it can also cause diseases such as meningitis, otitis media, pneumonia, and sinusitis. It can also cause bacteremia too. Hey, metacosis, can it damage my heart valves? Yes, it can, whether your valves were healthy or not. Now, let's get started. This is my microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding. As you recall, gram positives are either cocci or bacilli. If they are cocci, we ask ourselves, are you catalase positive or catalase negative? Well, Streptococcus pneumoniae is catalase negative, which means it does not have catalase, which means it cannot break down H2O2 into water and oxygen. It cannot break down the harmful into harmless. After this, what should I do? Look at hemolysis on the agar. If you're alpha hemolytic, you could be Streptococcus pneumoniae or Streptococcus viridans. How can I tell? You have two options. You can subject them to uptoken. If they are uptoken sensitive, i.e. the uptoken antibiotic killed the bacteria, that will be Streptococcus pneumoniae. If uptoken did not kill it, i.e. the bacteria was resistant, congratulations, you have found Streptococcus viridans. Another test is to subject both of them to bile. Bile will destroy and dissolve Streptococcus pneumoniae, but bile will not affect Strep viridans. So to recap, Streptococcus pneumoniae is gram-positive, i.e. purple, coccus, that is catalase negative, it's a streptococcus, so it's gonna be found and arranged in chains, usually short chains, could be just double cocci or diplococci. It's alpha hemolytic, sensitive to bile, and sensitive to uptoken. When I say streptococcus pneumonia, what does streptococcus mean? Chain-like. What does pneumonia mean? It means it can cause pneumonia. By the way, what does pneumonia mean? Pneumo means air i.e. your lungs, and pneumonia is like a kind of fancy name for pneumonitis. The original word was pneumonitis, inflammation of your alveoli and lungs. But some doofuses thought that pneumonitis is kind of heavy, so they said, you know what, let's call it pneumonia. And how about pleuritis? Oh, kind of heavy. Let's call it pleurisy. Dang these experts with their verbal virtuosity. Not to be confused with my patient's retinal artery virtuosity. As you recall, if it's a streptococcus, we can classify it based on serology. These are the groups. Based on hemolysis, of course, you know we're talking alpha hemolytic today, or you can classify them based on their biochemistry or physiological reactions. You will not believe it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Streptococcus pneumoniae is actually a subgroup within the Streptococcus mitis group, which is a subgroup of the very dense group Streptococci. Some facts about Streptococcus pneumoniae. Gram-positive cocci arranged in pairs, if they are arranged in pairs, we call them diplococci, or arranged in short chain. Chain, therefore, strept. The chain is made of spheres, coccus. This coccus can lead to pneumonia. You can call it pneumococcus or pneumococci. They are catalase negative, as you know. What does that mean? They do not possess the catalase, which means what? They cannot convert and break down the harmful hydrogen peroxide into the harmless oxygen water. Therefore, what? If you put the stinking bacteria in a medium that contains hydrogen peroxide, hydrogen peroxide will destroy the bacteria. Therefore, therefore what? Therefore, this bacteria cannot grow on ordinary media because it is subject to hydrogen peroxide. What should I do then? Provide the bacteria with a medium that contains catalase. Like what? Like blood and blood products. Oh, now I see. So if I provide the bacteria with a medium that contains catalase, the bacteria will now be able to break down that H2O2 into harmless components, i.e., it's not going to die, and it's going to grow on my petri dish. Genius. When the bacteria is picky, we call it 
fastidious. Strepnomo has fastidious nutritional requirements. It prefers to grow on enriched medium supplemented with blood and blood products. Strepnomo is alpha hemolytic as you know. Ever wondered why? Because it has something called nomolysin which is similar to streptolysin which is technically a hemolysin. What does hemolysin do? Causes lysis of hemo, lysis of blood. Let's break down that hemoglobin. When you break it down, you get a green pigment or a green product. Does anyone recall Billy Verdon, which came from the breakdown of hemoglobin? Why do we call it Billy Verdon, please? Because the word verd or vert means green. Oh, I never thought of it this way. Shut up. Read a book, Cody. Next, streptnumo is glucose fermenta. What does that mean? It can ferment glucose, and as you know, fermentation can provide me with acids and carbon dioxide. This is the yeast fermentation, if you remember the fermentation reaction. And that's why this bacteria cannot survive in a high sugar medium. Why not? Because high glucose equals lots of lactic acid production due to some robust glucose fermentation and too much lactic acid is freaking acid. It's acidic. It's gonna kill the strip pneumo. And that's why many companies add sugar to their products. Ketchup is a classic example. It's not just to taste good. It's also a preservative. All things being equal, the ketchup that has more sugar will survive more and will have a longer shelf life relatively speaking. Salt is a very similar story because high salt, like high sugar, can kill many bacteria. Strepnumo is one of them. You just learned that strepnumo is gram positive, right? Yeah, this is if the sample was fresh. However, old colonies do not stain very well. That's why they may appear gram negative. They appear pinkish because they lost their purple color, because they are weakly stained. They do not stain well especially if they are old. So gotta get your sample and make it fresh to make Gordon Ramsay happy. Oh, the aroma of the lamb sauce is just beautiful. F me. So in a nutshell, Streptococcus pneumoniae, if they are new colonies, they are usually gram positive, i.e. purple, but old colonies will give you a pink color. Eventually, all colonies will undergo something called otolysis because they have otolysin, known as amidase. This freaking amidase will cause lysis in the center, and when you see a dimple in the center of a coccus, you might want to bet the rent money that this was probably streptococcus pneumoniae. It likes blood a lot, so on blood agar they give you larger colonies. It does not like chocolate that much because it does not have the robust amount of catalase, that's why it grows with smaller colonies on chocolate. Moreover, streptococcus pneumoniae, if you give it an aerobic environment, it will give you alpha hemolysis. But in an anaerobic environment, it can give you beta hemolysis. Wow, interesting. If it gives me alpha hemolytic, which is very typical, can I ask why did this happen? It's thanks to pneumolysin. Do you remember the mechanisms of evasions of host defense that we talked about before? Yeah, one of them was having a capsule, such as what? Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, and Neisseria meningitidis. We're talking about Streptococcus pneumonia today. It has a wonderful polysaccharide capsule that protects it from your macrophages, especially those in the spleen. Hashtag splenic macrophages. That's why if you have removed your spleen, splenectomy, or if your spleen is toast, autosplenectomy, you will not be able to fight streptococcus pneumonia and she will destroy you. And that's why before surgeons remove your spleen, they will give you the vaccine against streptococcus pneumonia. They might even give you antibiotics because this is getting serious right now. The spleen is a very important organ. Next, just like any bacteria that we've studied so far, streptnumo has an arsenal of virulence factors so that she can destroy you. Do you recall Staph aureus? These are the virulence factors of Staph aureus. Does anyone remember protein A? Does anyone remember those gazillion toxins? Does anyone remember coagulase? How about Streptococcus pyogenes? She also has virulence factors. Does anyone remember the M protein? How about the erythrogenic toxin? Erythro means red for scarlet red fever and streptolysin S, streptolysin O, streptokinase, DNAs, etc. 
Streptococcus pneumoniae, which is today's topic, also has an arsenal of many variance factors. The most important one, the quintessential variance factor, is the capsule, made of polysaccharides, which inhibit phagocytosis, especially by your macrophages, especially those in the spleen. Freaking biologists love the capsule because they use it to classify different types of strep pneumoniae. Freaking bioscientists also love the capsule because it's a target for vaccine, especially the polyvalent vaccine. Moreover, one way to tell whether you developed immunity against streptococcus pneumonia or not is to test you for antibodies against the capsule of strep pneumonia sophisticated stuff. So the capsule is surrounding the entire cell. But let's dig deeper. How about the cell wall? Does it have some variant factors? Yeah, or sure, peptidoglycan, which is classic because it always has N-acetylmuramic acid and N-acetylglucosamine in bacteria. Peptidoglycan, remember, pyrogenes production, pyrogenesis, genesis of heat, of fever. Why? Due to production of interleukin-1 and production of TNF-alpha, which recruit neutrophils, causing inflammation and fever. Next, tachoic acid, also still in the cell wall. We have two parts of tachoic acid. One of them is exposed to the outside world. One of them is inside, embedded within the cell membrane, which is, of course, deeper than the cell wall. This deeper one is also known as the F antigen, as in F me, because it can cross-react with the Forceman surface antigen on mammalian cell. Forceman F antigen. Next, something doozy and unique for strep pneuma, which is phosphorylcholine. What does that do? Regulate cell wall hydrolysis, and it must be present for the otolytic enzyme to work, the otolysin, the amidase. Oh, the one that made the dimple in the center of the caucus? Thank you, Captain Obvious. Moreover, this phosphorylcholine binds platelet activating factor, which is not just on platelets, it's also present on surface of cells, making it easier for strep pneumo to invade your own cells. This is one of the reasons she can enter into your central nervous system causing meningitis. Next, streptococcus pneumonia possesses C polysaccharide, which activates your liver and induces your liver to produce what? CRP, C-reactive protein. I had a wonderful student in the comment section who asked a very, very good question. He said, CRP stands for C-reactive protein, but why do we call it C-reactive protein to begin with? Why C? Why not F, as in FU? Here's the answer. We called it C-reactive protein because it was caused and induced by the C polysaccharide of the streptococcus pneumoniae. It makes perfect sense. By the way, streptococcus pneumonia was discovered more than 100 years ago. This stuff is very old. Next, enzymes of streptococcus pneumonia. Pneumolysin. Oh, this is the cause of the alpha hemolysis. Yeah, because pneumolysin is a hemolysin, breaks down hemoglobin into green products. That's why it's alpha hemolytic, green colors. It also acts as a cytotoxin. It's very similar to streptolysin O, which belongs to streptococcus pyogenes. It binds cholesterol of your cell membrane, making pores inside your cell membrane, destroying your cell membrane of your epithelial cells and of your phagocytic cells like macrophages. In addition, pneumolysin will mobilize and recruit your neutrophils. It activates the classical complement pathway, unlike the peptidoglycan and tachoic acid, which activated the alternative complement pathway, and the same pneumolysin will inhibit the oxidative burst of your neutrophils. So it's gonna recruit your neutrophils, causing inflammation and all kind of gunk. However, those neutrophils are not so effective because we are inhibiting their oxidative burst. The strep pneumo is very sneaky. How about amidase? This is the otolysin. It causes lysis via hydrolysis, which releases the cell wall component because we are destroying the cell wall of the bacteria, releasing all kinds of gunk into your bloodstream, which trigger inflammation. I have a video on my channel about the complement system, but let's review it very quickly. Classical, alternative, and lectin pathway. The only difference is who is going to start the cascade? Who will pull the trigger? But after you pull the trigger, the end result is the exact same, regardless of the pathway that you choose. The end result is always MAC, which will 
attack the bacteria. Complement proteins start with C, which stands for complement, no duh. And then when we have something like C3A and C3B, here's the rule. Whenever it has an A, it's gonna run away. It's gonna leave the cascade, leave the reaction, because A is anaphylatoxin, i.e. it causes anaphylaxis. However, C3B and C5B and any B will continue to be inside the cascade, inside reaction, to bulldoze and push the cascade forwards. Here's the classical complement pathway. Who pulled the trigger? Antigen-antibody reaction. And in cases of streptococcus pneumoniae, it was the pneumolysin who pulled the trigger. How about this? Alternative complement pathway. A piece of the bacteria, streptnumo, is gonna trigger my own complement cascade. And this was the peptidoglycan and the tachoic acid, which are in the cell wall of the streptnumo. The end result is the same, complement activation. Here are the three complement pathways. As you see, they start different. However, they share the common destination, which is the MAC, which is going to attack the bacteria. Sometimes it attacks your own cells. Do you recall acute inflammation? I have a separate video about this topic. Yeah, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Who is responsible for this? Who is the hero? It was my neutrophils. How do I recruit the neutrophil and tell it to leave the blood vessel and go to the interstitium to fight the bacteria which is in the interstitium. In order to recruit my neutrophils, I need recruiters. Such as what? Interleukin-1 and TNF-alpha and others, including C5A, which came from the complement pathway. Oh, I remember you told me that the tachoic acid and the peptidoglycan are pyrogens. They can also recruit neutrophils. Absolutely. These cytokines will recruit neutrophils, making your pneumonia worse, making your meningitis worse, making your otitis worse. They're trying to help, but sometimes they destroy you. What are the diseases caused by the streptococcus pneumonia? Just remember MOPS, M, meningitis, O, otitis media, P, pneumonia, and the S is sinusitis. Don't forget that normally speaking, streptnumo is present in many people's throat and nasopharynx. And I have a separate video on pneumonia in my pulmonology playlist. Let's talk more about pneumonia. First of all, it's more common in cold months. All of these are more common in cool months. And it can happen as a secondary bacteria infection, secondary to a virus, usually influenza virus. The flu is a complication of this virus. You get a secondary bacteria infection on top of that primary. What kind of bacteria could this be? It could be Staph aureus or it could be today's topic, Streptococcus pneumoniae. And then this pneumonia is low bar usually, unless you are very young or very old or immunocompromised, you'll have bronchopneumonia, which is worse usually. And then this is productive cough. Oh yeah, it's pneumonia with blood tinged sputum. Because when you have congestion in your lungs, some red blood cells will start to leak and leave the blood vessel. And then you cough <coughs> and get blood out. This pneumonia usually happens because of aspiration. Remember, it lives in your throat and nasopharynx already. If you aspire it because your cough reflex is not good because you're very young or very old or disoriented or immunocompromised, it can lead to pneumonia. How about if I removed my spleen? You cannot fight the capsule then. Therefore, you are at a higher risk of pneumonia caused by strep pneumonia. Where does it live? It loves your alveoli. Why my alveoli? Because now they are filled with fluid because called consolidation, right? And this alveolar fluid is very rich in nutrients. And as you know, strep pneumo is fastidious. In the next video, we'll talk about diagnosis and treatment of streptococcus pneumonia plus anemonic. But for now, let's review using Picmonic. Characteristics of streptococcus pneumonia include the fact that it's gram-positive. Here's the angel, because an angel is a positive thing. The devil is negative, but angel is positive. Diplococcus, double-cocked eyes. Lancet-shaped, catalase negative. Here's the negative cat. Optokin sensitive. Here is my sensitive octopus. Bile soluble, as you see here. Alpha hemolytic. Look at this green color and say thank you to pneumolysin. It has a polysaccharide capsule and we can use this in the quillung reaction, which is next video's topic. And how does this bacteria counteract your own IgA? Using IgA protease. 
If you enjoyed this video, you will adore my antibiotics course, which will teach you about antibacterials, antivirals, antiparasitics, and antifungal medications. You can download all these videos today at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Or you can try my surgery high yields course also at medicosisperfectionalis.com. For a limited number of students, use promo code TOXIDROME to get a 40% discount. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.